<laughs> okay, good morning, good morning. It's gonna be a stinker today. It's super, super hot. The truck in the distance there is one that we don't see very often. Actually, we see it, I see it once a month. He normally comes earlier, between 7 and 7.30 or so. When I come back from the pool, whatever, I'll see it there. What it is, it's the, it's the truck, the, the, what do you call it, the landscaping company that handles all the floral and, and greenery inside the coffee shop. Just where the truck is parked, there's a brick entrance there. That's to a coffee shop. It's an uh, no, base, the coffee shop it's been in for years. And they get a bunch of potted palms and trees and all kinds of stuff. And instead of, you know, they don't try and do the maintenance themselves. They have a professional company. And they come and do the change. So they, they, what he's been doing for the past 15, 20 minutes, he's been, he's been using his little dolly and taking the old ones out and putting new ones in. So they change them, I guess. There's no sunshine in there, so I guess a potted tree has to get some rest and relaxation time somewhere else. So he may have finished, or we may see a couple more trees come in and out. I don't know. We'll see how it goes here. He's been busy for the past half an hour with the dolly, back and forth, back and forth. I didn't count, so I don't know if he's finished yet or not or what. But, uh, but it's hot. My God, it's hot out there. Oh, there he is. What's he got? Oh, the empty dolly. Yeah, he's finished then. No, that was the paperwork. He's brought out the empty dolly and the paperwork, so he's done. So we're not going to see any trees coming in or out. It can't be helped. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good morning, good evening, good night, whatever. So. I'm here, I had my vaccination yesterday evening, five, five o'clock or so, out in Ome. I didn't spend a weekend out in Ome, I just, it was too raining and too much bad weather and too much work here. So I just went out Sunday afternoon, went on the train, went out there, got my shot, came back. Seems okay. Slept through it. Unless suddenly something is going to grab me. We have a, a show and tell package to open. We'll open a new one that just came in last night. That should be interesting. It's some some hoxite, some funny, strange hoxite. We'll look at that at show and tell time. And today's work is going to be, we're going to continue, just carving on the block. The, something else to mention, I'm not going to do it on stream here, but just to mention it. The, the prints we opened up, you saw these yesterday or Thursday, whatever. I opened them up, had a look at them, looks nice, very nice. Thank you, jihara san bang, 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 bang. Uh, then later on that day, I had to figure out how many are good, how many are okay, so that we can pay her, send the bill through. So I went through, you know, like this, whatever, one, two, three. Check, 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 check. And they're mostly okay. She had two or three I don't know, in the batch that were misregistered, stuff like this. But when I went through them, I was going to break them into two piles. One pile that can go out to Ome for packaging right now, and one pile that it will need a little dot or something pulled out of the paper because this print has so many open spaces, it's really a critical for Chidi. And I could not find any to send through. Every single piece of paper in this whole damn package is going to have to come under my scope. That's the problem with prints that have... <laughs> you can do it, you can do it. It's stiff. It's really, really stiff. That's the problem. There's no single sheet here that is, is clear of this mess that I'm going to have to pick out. Look. Sheet number one. I didn't set this up. This is just the way it is. Sheet number two. Sheet number three. We can't send out a print like this. Look at the crap. And I think it was actually a mistake to order this print from our printers with the current paper that we have. It was a mistake to ask them to do this. 
because it's just way too much wasted time for me. Is this one okay? No. Bing, bing. With the kind of paper we have these days, I really, now that I think about it, and I should have thought about it before sending this job, we should just retire designs like this. I simply cannot make prints like this with the kind of supplies that we have today. The kind of print that Taran-san is carving for us right now, the Hiroshi Yoshida print, the forest, the trees, all that stuff, totally okay. You got a dot of, of uh, no chidi in there, no one ever, ever, ever is gonna notice. So I'm thinking, I hadn't really realized it or thought about it, we know the paper has been on a decline, but seeing this print now, which we haven't had in our catalog for years, seeing this makes me realize it might be time for a fork in our road here. And simply, given the current situation, we can no longer make products like this. Maybe if our chidi machine comes to fruition and we can do it in the future, but at the moment, we shouldn't waste our time with stuff like this. Someone says, we just have to accept that spots are the norm now. I can't do that. I can't send this out to anybody. Am I, would you want this? If you, if you ordered a print from Mokohankan and you got this, would you, what would you think? It's handmade, it's okay, except the defects because it's handmade. I don't want to go there. Anyway, sorry to bring up the same topic, but this is on my desk. It's now, this is waiting for me to dig through this thing. And what I'm going to do is this afternoon, I'll just spend a half an hour. I'll go through and I'll get three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine copies, send them through to Ome. It's open up in the catalog page and then just leave these as a backstop. And then when we Ome says they're running out, clean up some more. When they're running out, clean up some more. But I cannot spend, you tell me, 80 copies. How long would it take me to do this? Anyway, enough of that. Let's get some work done. You know what we're going to be doing. No surprises here now for the next... Ah, it's painful. <laughs> I skipped the pool on doctor's orders. They told me no strong exercise tomorrow when I got the shot yesterday. My experience so far with these shots has been zero, just nothing happens. No, no pain, no fever, no nothing. But the arm is sore and they said no exercise tomorrow. So yes, doc. That's cable pulling it. It's the power cable pulling it. And this is a wandering off view. Let's try. Oh, there's a little, I uh, know, Danny. See him? It's summertime. Here we are. It's a little, what do you call it, Danny? I know. The little ones that they live inside the stones and stuff like that, and in, in the tatami mats. I don't know the word in English. It's not a flea, it's a, a mite. A mite, like a dust mite. Where'd he go? They're everywhere here. They're everywhere. And it's especially in my room, I have a real problem because there's no balcony for my room and I can't air my bedding. And normally in summer, you have got to get your bedding aired every day or these things just multiply beyond belief. So I'm struggling, I'm trying to vacuum my bed every couple of days. It's a summertime thing, a mite. 
They eat the dead skin on the bedding. So, 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 so. I don't think these are the ones. I don't think they bite people. I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, no, they are really food. The little jumping spiders we have, I guess, they live on these things. I don't know. But if you don't air the bedding, my God, they grow out of control. You know. And I can't. The only place to air the bedding is up on the roof. And that's tough for me to get the bedding up there, you know, to grab that stone roll, carry it up, get to the f third floor, up those stairs. So I don't do it as often as I should, and these things are multiplying. When you think about it, that's a pretty good view here. You've got a view of a, of a Japanese workshop that is so good, you can even see the microscopic bugs. <laughs> we should advertise this as a feature. Feature of our Twitch stream are the bugs. That's not a bug, that's a feature. It's actually it's a bug, but it's a feature. We should, we should uh, think about this. Huh? Special summer bonus. The marks on my arm are for the, these are from mosquitoes. I got bit to death. And they're going away now. Last weekend, I got bit to death out there in Ume. Last weekend meaning the weekend before last weekend. I should have had the sense to wear a shirt, but whatever. Knife overboard. <laughs> <laughs> jelly side down or jelly side up? side up. <laughs> it must have hit on its bottom. <laughs> the block here is large. You know, you've seen me normally in the past while I've been carving the little small box blocks for this year's series. My bench is a certain size. I'm in a certain place. I've got this box, got my water, but this block is physically larger than the ones I've been carving recently. So I put something down at the edge there, rotate, 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 and of course my block pushes the thing off the edge of the table. <laughs> so, <laughs> the jelly side up. What's this, what's this? The story about mosquitoes and stuff? Oh no, the, in the only place I was doing, I was doing the gardening all around the house. I, I cut the bushes at the front door around the side of the house. I went down, I laid in the river for a while. There's no mosquitoes down there at the actual surface of the river because the, uh, the mosquitoes don't breed in the river. The fish take care of those. But there's lots of standing water in the town everywhere. The guy next to us with the parking lot, 
he's got these styrofoam trays. It's from the udon place, and they end up being full of water. So there's tons of mosquitoes up in the town around the house and where I was doing the trimming and stuff. So it's both things are true. There are tons of mosquitoes there, but down at the actual river level, there's almost nothing. Yes, Karen says mosquitoes don't like running water. Maybe they don't even try to put their eggs in the stream because the fish would get it. I don't know. I guess they know what's going on. Those fish are hungry, super hungry all the time. Paper's out. She's already started. Ishikawa-san was here before I was up this morning. I got up at 6, went upstairs, took out Ishikawa-san's paper, came back down, relaxed for a while. She came. She's printing the... She's doing her test printing on the September print. We've already done test printing. The edition printing has started with the Daychance group. And now Ishikawa-san is doing her group. But she wants to do her own little test first to see how to handle the question of these women's eyes. It's still actually not really decided how we're going to handle this, the printing for the September edition. And she's upstairs there now doing her own uh, test printing. And she's the only one that will be here today. There was going to be, Sukasan was going to come, but she cancelled again. Uh, they've got uh, lots and lots of family business this summer. They're, they're, I think it her grandfather, or no, her husband's father, I can't remember, passed away. And they're quite traditional, so they've got to do all the different temple visits and stuff like this. So, so she's actually got lots and lots of family stuff going on this summer. And I think, honestly speaking, too, the, in the hot weather, she wants to just cut back a bit. So, so she's off today. She'll be here on Friday. Then we've also got a sort of scheduling problem now again with the carving. We've got the design for the October print is here from Jed. The design for the October match level prints is here. And we've got to decide who's going to carve it. Now, Chonsan's just finished the September print. I did August. Chonsan did September. And normally, maybe it would have been Kawasaki-san for October. But she's still in the middle of doing the Matsushima project. So I have to decide, in fact, I should have decided over the weekend, I have to decide whether to ask her to pause Matsushima and get going on the October print set for, for the Embrace the Delight, or tell her just keep going on Matsushima, and Chon son and I have to decide between the two of us who's going to do the October designs. I would really like to just keep on going here and get busy with this surfer. But John san wants to get going on the test carving for next year's project, which I'm still NDA, I'm still not allowed to talk about. And we have to get a test of that done soon, because the collaboration company is going to need some results from us. So that's a priority. So it actually is possible that I'm going to have to put this block away. and get busy with the October subscription prints. And that by then now would be a rush job because the printers are going to need it by the end of this month. If it's not one thing, it's another. Taransan's also busy. The project Taransan is working on is, a, is something that I really, really, and I mean really, want to get into the catalog. When this shop opens sometime, hopefully soon, 
we are going to need exactly the kind of print that Taran-san is working on. And I would like him to just to keep going on that one without disturbing him. Same as the Matsushima. We need Shin Hunga. We're desperately short of Shin Hunga prints. So I want Kawasaki-san to finish the Matsushima. Taran-san to finish his Yoshida. Whatever. Just, just, I don't mean finish it right now, but just, just get going on these things. I don't want to disturb that workflow. It's also the issue of what work is most suitable for people. The October subscription print is very, very, very small scale, quite fine lines again. I'm not sure it's the best work that would be sent to Talansan. Which what else there is to uh, local news and stuff? There's a little bit of an update. The the new bar behind us, the one where we had the this sign where I had trouble reading it. Actually, and I still I, I'm I'm quibbling about this. I went out there last night after I came back from Ome, got my shot, came back. I walked around the back there because I heard some noise and I realized that they were opening up. They had their little. It wasn't a grand opening yesterday. It was a, a stealth opening. No signs, no nothing like that. But it was a stealth opening, clearly for locals. And uh, I've learned what's going on. The people I saw there, they had some chairs and tables outside. The local people I saw there are an exact group of people who I know, but I haven't seen them in a couple of years. Those of you who know the history here, next door to me here is a restaurant now, but it used to be a kimono rental place, then it used to be a shoe store before that. Then next to them is a little old group of shacks, tiny little shacks. There's the famous coffee shop, Tenkoku. And then in there, there was a bar called Emi. And all the first four, five, six years that we had our shop here, Emi's bar was there. Emi was a an elderly lady, the kind they call here a madam in Japanese. Not a madam in the sense of running a, a greenhouse. A madam in the sense of a bar, just the lady who had her own bar. And she had a regular clientele of, of uh, locals sit there in the tiny bar, sit outside on the sidewalk in the summer. She closed a couple of years ago. I think just simply she was just getting too old to do it. But the customers that I saw last night on the sidewalk drinking outside the new place are the same people. I recognize them. I don't know their names. They're just, just locals, just a bunch of people outside. So I can see what's happening. That new bar back there is a local person, and that was the name. We saw the name, right? Li Chan, the kind of title. We talked about it on the stream the other day. It's clearly the uh, mood is going to be, it's just a little local hangout for the locals. And that's why they're on the back street. They don't care about catching tourists or catching salarymen or whatever. We're obviously going to be in business just as a little local watering hole. And maybe the guy who's owning it, maybe he was one of the customers of, of Emmy's place. I don't know. I don't know these people at all. I don't know the stories. But this matches now the sign. But 
I still will stand by it. The horizontal sign reads okay, but the vertical sign looks like a jump. And I still think it says Li Chan. Nobody's agreeing with me. They say it says Li Chan. But I think it says Li Chan. And I thought it meant reach up, as in the name for a bar. Emmy, Emmy. Her name was Emmy. It, it was in Katakana phrasing. Her name was Emmy. It's, it's a woman's name. A long ago, you were done carving for the day by the time the shop opened, Dave. Not sure what you mean. You mean here in the Saxa we're talking about? I was done carving for the day by the time the shop opened. There's a couple of other things in my notes, stuff I was supposed to talk. There was an email the other day from somebody, I guess they watched the last stream. And uh, it, it reminded me again about stuff, you know, I sit here carving and some, just sort of sometimes chatting or whatever stuff that's happening. And I will say something as part of my conversation and not really think too much of it. And it seems that sometimes, or maybe more than sometimes, I don't know, people out there are listening to something I say and might take it in a bit more serious way than I intended. And the example here that I got in the email, this was Thursday afternoon after the stream, soon after the stream. I, I guess we had, there must have been an ambulance gone by, right? We had the camera outside and an ambulance went by somewhere in the distance. It didn't come in front of us here. And I had to go back and see what I had said. And it turned out that I had said something like, there's another uh, heat stroke victim or something like this, blah, 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 without, you know, over thinking about it too much, whatever. And the email said, Dave, there's no way that can be a heat stroke victim. The temperature in Tokyo right now is only like 23 degrees or something like this. And I, I answered politely, that's okay. But I thought, whatever. I don't know. The reason I would have said heat stroke, thinking about it, is that sure, in our newspaper recently, there's been lots of stories about this heat and ambulances. And I forget the number. We can Google it. It said something like, they're asking people not to make frivolous or trivial calls to the ambulances because the ambulances are overloaded with heat stroke patients these days. And that, I forget the number, 88% or 82% or something of all ambulance calls these days are for heat stroke. So the sort of background in my mind, people, people, and I said something like, there's another heat stroke patient. And yet the person said, Dave, that can't be true because it's only so I don't know what to say, I don't know, what can I say in my defense? Please don't believe anything I say. I'm trying to just, whatever, it's a little tiny window into our community here, that, that light conversation that we have while this stream goes on. This is not a prepared speech, it's not, I don't know, I don't know whatever. Or what do I say? Just don't believe anything I say. I don't know. Just relax. Relax. People are, you know, I'm, I'm not actually being hostile here or trying to be, what's the word, passive aggressive. I really appreciate the community. And people are listening and talking and we've got something going on. But just I, the, the problem for me is how much is so serious and how much is not serious and how much is, is people are really seeing more here than what I'm actually presenting or doing, you know. So 
So I don't know. I don't know. I get this in the YouTube, you know. I get this. Or the visitors sometimes. The visitors are so effusive. Oh my God, I'm here. Uh, whatever. I don't want to talk about the same thing again and again. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, thanks for being here. Thanks for chatting along. But uh, no, it's just another stream of some guy sitting here working and passing along a tiny bit of the knowledge and information about the local community here. But somehow, in some respects, it seems that the people are perhaps... whatever. Anyway, I'm the big overthinker, so I can't criticize somebody else for overthinking. It doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's not the best wood in the world. It's not super hard, but it is hard enough for this job, and it's got enough crispiness in it that it's a pleasure to work with. It's got a bit of backwards grain, which makes it a bit awkward. You have to be careful. But I am enjoying this compared to what we've had recently. Another thing that uh, I did get asked about, uh, that people asked me to update, the question of when is Japan opening up? And uh, this is a big question and concern for all of us. When is Japan opening up? I, know I don't you know, really know any more about it than most of you do. Anybody out there who is following Japanese news and stuff, we're still all up in the air. The government, the election is over. We had probably said a few weeks ago that uh, once the election was over, the government would feel that they had more freedom to act and stuff like this. And it seems like they're paralyzed. I, know I, just, I read the headlines in a couple of paragraphs of the news each day now. And the big thing in the government right now, it's cabinet shuffle, cabinet shuffle. And because of the fatality last month, the awful incident where Abisan was, was shot to death, that has turned the political focus on one thing only. Where is, this, where is the power structure in Japan right now? Because he was the kingmaker, the man who died, Abisan, the man who died last month. He wasn't the prime minister at the moment, but he was the kingmaker. And all of a sudden, there's a huge you now a power vacuum, and people are shuffling and shuffling and getting and getting. So nobody in the government right now is thinking at all about governing. Nothing. They're, they're, the face of it is yes, yes, yes. But all they're doing right now is it's shares, power shuffling. And it, I have no idea the nuance of what's going on there is way beyond me. There's people reading these tea leaves and just, just, just forget it. It's just like the Kremlin used to be back in the old days. So there's no governing going on right now. It's simply power, power, power. And apparently there's going to be a cabinet shuffle today or tomorrow or next week or something like this. And maybe then, finally, when the shuffling is done and all the tea's been drunk and all the whatever and the new meetings have been had, somebody finally is going to try and sit down and make some decisions on these governance issues. You tell me, whatever. The impression I get, I, there's two competing things here. The impression I get is that just forget about it. It's not going to happen. But there is something else happening that will affect this thing. There's a story in the newspaper. This wasn't yesterday. This was two or three days ago. It's about the classification of the, what, the COVID-19. And up to now, they, they have a classification of diseases here, level one, two, three, four, five, uh, based on their, uh, what's the word? How, how, uh, how easily they're transmitted, infectious disease control. Now, this is a new virus, and it's not actually in that classification. So they didn't know what to do with it. So somebody made the decision, let's put it at level two. So they've been doing all their using hospital beds and making rules based on the fact that the virus has been treated as though it was a level two. I think tuberculosis is level one. I don't know the details. So they've been doing it as though it was a level two for the past couple of years. But there's a little hint now. What they're doing is, where is it? COVID-19 is not included among the diseases in the five-tier categorization system, but has been treated as equivalent to category two, the second most severe level. And that's been the justification for all the different things. Close the restaurants, do this, do that, do this. But now,
Some local governments, experts, and members of the business community have suggested downgrading it to a level equivalent to Category 5, the same level as seasonal influenza, which would mean tallies would not have to be reported. In other words, they're going to stop counting. They're going to stop testing. They're going to stop counting. It's just whatever. It's influenza. In other words, this is the big, we give up, we're going to pretend this is endemic moment. The review is inevitable after we get over the seventh wave, which is what's happening right now. It's peaking. The government will identify measures that can relax, that can be relaxed to the extent necessary for the normalization of social and economic activities. So if they do this, if they drop it from essentially level two to level five, we have this system. I think the epidemiologists aren't yet calling it endemic, but in a practical use for people like us who are not medical, uh, medical experts, it's behaving as though it was endemic. So if this actually happens now, after the cabinet shuffle is over, if they do do this, that would then say, okay, identify measures that can be relaxed to the extent necessary for the normalization of social and economic activities, which means to me that looks like we may be getting a border opening. No idea. No idea, no idea. That's Dave's reading of the tea leaves in yesterday's newspaper, so I don't know. Nothing is going to happen today, tomorrow. Cabinet shuffle first, a couple of days to settle down, move the virus to level five, and then take, take count down the days to the airport openings. So as John's saying, this means now they're going to start. That opening question is now going to be on the table. So we'll see. Corin got me saying, it's Japan, it's still a year away. I don't know. I'm not telling you what's going to happen. I'm just passing on my, my <laughs> tea leaf reading. That's all. So. <laughs> okay, where are we going on this thing? Let's get some, let's get some more work done here. Speaking of the October print set, it, it's looking like I might be the person, as I said, who is carving that. But if that's the case, then today's Monday, and I would be doing that on Thursday. So Thursday's stream this week. Thursday's stream may be uh, me carving a different block than this one. And if that's the case, you're going to be able to see what the picture is. And I can tell you whatever. The theme for the October print is Aki no Aji. The October print set. The group. It'll be a group of five again. We've sort of settled on that group of five. It, it really, really works well for both the carving and for the printing and for the block size and for cutting the paper. I had originally thought about this year's series being more variety of print shapes on each set, 
but we have a real trouble with getting them to fit on the wash sheet if we do vertical, horizontal, or a different outline. So we've sort of settled on this group of five. So it's going to be Aki no Aji, the taste of autumn. And then the one after that, the November series, is also decided. And I think it's a bit too soon to chat about that. It's going to be a fun group. The emphasis on F-U-N, fun. I realize that the prints we have this year, we've done everything. We've done landscape, we've done this, we've done that, we've done actors, we've done animals, we've done Bijinga. But there's something that's been missing and there's we've been missing a sort of a light-hearted fun set where people look at it and kind of laugh, whatever. And that's coming up in November. That's the November set. Does my knife need sharpening? I'm digging it, John. Did you see? Okay, technical questions then. Did you see what happened when I cut in her shoulder a minute ago? I went round normally through her shoulder, and then I cut a relief cut before starting to, uh, before starting to take the wood out. And as I started to take it out from her shoulder with this knife, I realized I was in danger because that original cut had been a bit too shallow. I thought if I go ahead and pull this out, I'm really in danger of breaking part of that line off because this knife hadn't gone down deep enough. And if you play back this thing, you'll see I went back in here over the same line again, which we don't really want to do. I went back over the same line again, pushing down a bit deeper before I dared to come here and take it out. So what Dave is doing right now, where am I? I've lost it already. What Dave has done just now on this last line he's carved is I've plunged this X, X percent deeper the first time because I'd rather cut it deep enough once than come back and try and get in the same place. You guys are watching closely. Emphasis on F. <laughs> okay, fun. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, is today going to be one of those days? I also see that I forgot this morning. I promised myself, I didn't mention this, but I promised myself that before the stream started, I would go out there with a piece of tape and I would tape up the bell <laughs> next door because <laughs> I think it's getting a bit too intrusive. I have two minds about that. If I tape it up for a few minutes and then at the end of the stream take the tape off, it'll be okay, they will never notice. But you know exactly what would happen. I would tape it up end of the stream comes up, Ayano-san comes here, I get busy with something else, I forget, and I would leave the tape on. The people would come to the restaurant, they would see the tape, and here we go, boom, boom, boom. They would take the bell down and we'd never see it again, because they would have got the message, one of the neighbors is giving us a message, shut this damn thing up. And I have no such desire, no such mood, but if I forgot and left the tape on, that's exactly what would happen. I sleep upstairs there, just above the sink with the window wide open, and I don't even notice it. Dave is a good sleeper, and the little chime in the background, it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. They would blame the bag lady. No, they wouldn't. They know she would never do that because she's Japanese. <laughs> they would know exactly, instantly, who did it, because there's only one type of person would do such a thing the foreigner next door. So they would know exactly what had done, who did it. 
So we could do it. You guys have been reminding me about paper out. So let's do this. If that bell does get intrusive, today's not so windy, but if it's a windy day and it gets intrusive, you can do two things. You can ask me to go out there and tape it. But then at the end of the stream, in all caps, 100 people need to say, Dave, go out there and take the tape off. <laughs> Hunter's already started. We need a bot command. <laughs> but it wouldn't help, you know. I'd say, okay, I remember, I remember. I would shut the stream down. I and I would say something, and I would forget. Social disaster. Social disaster. So <laughs> we could do it. I can see where this is going to go. I can see it. There's no way I can hit it. You can't hit it a hundred. I can't bat a thousand. It's just like, why does that analogy comes to mind? It's like the old thing about Margaret Thatcher and the IRA. My God, why would I remember that? Yeah. Because if I start taping it up, I have to remember 100% of the time to take the tape off. If I forget just once, then there you have it. The downside of plunging heavily here that I'm doing, you know, the downside is by plunging more heavily, I am stressing that line more than it perhaps should be stressed. So, so I should perhaps cut, cut a relief cut first, maybe, to be actually correct with this. Put the relief cut in first. Now I can plunge more deeply without stressing. Look, you can see, but the difficulty is now it's hard to steer because as I cut, the wood moves under the knife. You can't win for winning. Brush mark at the edge. Tight. There we go. Yeah, someone's saying, you don't get it. Just talk to them and tell them so that there's no miscommunication. It's difficult. I don't know what to say. I want to avoid making people have the view that Japan is this weird, bizarre country where nothing happens normally and stuff like that. But it's a weird, bizarre country when it comes to human relations. Stuff that little things become monstrously big things uh, to an extent that in my experience with life back in Canada, you can have casual conversations. Here, there's really no such thing, and I'm not really exaggerating much when I say this. There's really no such thing as a completely casual conversation. Everybody is looking for more than what you actually say. And literally, I can't talk to the guys next door and say, hey, we were chatting about your bell, you know, we were, we were trying to record something. And that was it. They would take this as the hint that, that I would be really steamed and angry about this. Because if I were really steamed and angry about this, this is the way I would be supposed to do. You hint delicately about something. You would never come yelling and screaming. But if you're steamed and angry, you would delicately hint. So if I make what I think is a casual conversation talking about something, that's the delicate hint. People are being good at Japanese. They would take this, okay, I see, good. He's trying to keep, make no waves. He's trying to keep the community peaceful. 
and they would take anything that I said about that bell, they would take that as a request to remove the bell. There's no way around this. There's just no way around it. It took me years, years, years. When you're a foreigner at the beginning, it's a little bit different because they know that you don't know any of this stuff. A tourist, if you're a tourist, don't worry about this stuff. And people who say, oh my God, I'll never go to Japan as a tourist now because it's stuff I take it. They know tourists don't do this, relax. So if you're a tourist, you can say anything and it's okay. You have the mark on your forehead that says Gaijin, you're a tourist, so don't sweat this. But when you're living in a community and they know you've been here a million years and when you're speaking Japanese, that's when the, the, the Japanese rules come into play. And it is. And I think every culture and every language does has to have these rules. Back in Canada, if I was living there, my neighbor over the fence were chatting, hey, there are similar rules, you know, things you can talk about, things you can't talk about, and ways to communicate a displeasure without actually banging on the table. Every culture must have these. So don't tunnel, don't, don't jump the, oh my God, I could never go to Japan, blah, 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 blah. If you are in Japan for a long time, and if you're speaking Japanese, you, you get these things. And maybe I'm overthinking some of it, possibly, because I'm more aware of these things because I'm trying to do them properly than a native Japanese who doesn't, isn't aware of these, they just do them natively. Anyway, 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 anyway. I watched a YouTube video about exactly this kind of stuff over the weekend. There's a guy, a foreigner living here in Japan who I had not known about until YouTube threw up this recommendation for me. Maybe somebody knows this guy. What was his name? He's got a YouTube channel where he does conversations in Japanese. He takes side A, side B. He's reading into a microphone. Side A, side B, side A, side B. And he is really, 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 really good at Japanese. Dogen, think. Dogen, somebody's got it. Dogen. I don't know his real name. Anyway, for the first time, I didn't know about this guy. I saw YouTube recommended one of these, and he was talking about uh, the, the, the little skit he was presenting was making payment at the dentist's office. And I watched this, just my jaw was on the floor about how good this guy is. Because I'm good enough at this to understand how good this guy is. You know, I'm, I'm, he's, he's, a, he's a blinding star. I'm a little nothing as far as speaking Japanese goes. But I can see. And this guy is so good. And the, the conversation he gave between the, the dentist receptionist and the customer. And then you read the comments about people who have some experience of this and whoa, 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 whoa. It really made me learn stuff about this, that how much of that Japanese shop receptionist talk, which is considered completely normal, neutral communication talk here in Japan, is seen as passive aggressive by someone with a foreign point of view. And it did, it took me back to when I was here in the early days, just learning the language and starting to have my first conversations in Japanese, and yet my mind was still thinking completely English, Western Canadian, but I was trying to make words out of my mouth in Japanese. And whoa, 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 so you've learned some words, but you haven't learned the cultural stuff that goes in the background behind them. That guy is good. Boy, oh boy, he's good. <laughs> I watched that and thought, you know, I've been in Japan longer than he's been alive or something. He looks like about 30 something. I've been here 36 years. And my, you know, when, when I see that and listening to this, Jesus, look at that. Listen to that. And then I've got two minds. Half of me says, Dave. How can you be so bad? You've been here longer than this boy has been alive. And how can he speak Japanese so well? And you're still so bad. And then the other half of Dave says, hey, 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 can he do this? You know, whatever. The years and months and days that I've spent here, I have focused my time on certain things. And that young man has focused his time on other stuff. He has studied and drilled and practiced like crazy. So I sit back and just enjoy it. Hey, there's no reason to feel uh, to feel intimidated by this. He has 
spent his time doing something, you know. But I really, really enjoyed listening to that. It just, it was, it's like watching any, anybody do something. It's like watching a sports guy. That girl on the, the English soccer team about two weeks ago, the girl that kicked that goal with a back heel. <laughs> just, you watch it and you replay and you replay and it's like somebody so good at something is pleasure to watch, you know. Speaking of which, <laughs> keep quiet and... and do your thing. I'll have to look it up more. I honestly said that the, the day I saw that video a couple of days ago, I was actually quite busy with doing some other stuff. So I saw the video, marveled at it, replayed it once to marvel at it some more, listened to it. And then instead of watching more of his stuff, I just had to get going with my, my work. But uh, I should look up his channel and see some more. So I know nothing about the person himself. Is he here in Tokyo? Is he down in a different part of Japan or, or something? I don't know. And I guess if I were younger, I really, really should start to work on my Japanese more and, and try and get it better. Because it's so much pleasure to see someone like that doing it so well, you know. And I've come a good percent of the way. It wouldn't take a whole lot of effort to take my pronunciation to that last group, you know. It would just have to be conscious practice, you know, which I'm not doing. So I should maybe think about it. <laughs> But if I were younger, absolutely, I should, without any doubt, I should work on that. Someone like him, he must look at people like me who have such a clumsy level of Japanese. I hope he, you know, I hope he doesn't feel too cynical when he looks at people like me, you know. When I came, there was a previous generation of foreigners, you know, the people, a generation, literal generation older than me. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. They came and they didn't even try and learn. They had Japanese wives who did all the translation, so the sort of the generation, a, a step above me, didn't make any attempt to learn Japanese. My generation at least tried to jump in and, and learn and do it in a sort of survival method. Someone like this young man, this Dogen, he has studied it, so there's a zero to trying to get through to studying it. There's a, there's a generational difference here. And I looked at the men above me a little bit sympathetically. Those guys didn't expect, they were told that Japanese was too difficult for normal humans to understand. So they were told that the game was not worth the candle, don't even try. So that's why those men above me, they're all gone now, they're all dead now. That's why I don't have any bad feeling about them. So I hope that guys like Dogen will look at me and say, okay, I get it, you know, he's getting along, it's okay. John says, all you need is an extra hour a day. Sure, okay, anytime. I'll take the donation. You guys could have a nice YouTube collab. Have I met any Japanese YouTubers? No, not at all. When, where does Dogen live? Does anybody know him? I should, I should just look it up. I guess I'm sure the information is out there. He's in Beppu. So no chance to really hang out there, but whatever. Good morning, Okamura-san. There's a box from Ome to show you've got it already. Hi. So the other boxes are, it's mostly stuff for Watanabe-san. We've found a bunch of YouTube stuff this week. Oh, okay. There's a box of wood. That's for, I know, I, 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 no, I, the other person here whose name starts, Aya Aoyama-san. Oh. And it's the, it's the key block for next month's uh, ED prints, which we need. So Ooh. he'll handle that. Beppu is the other end of the country. It's, uh, it's on the east, it's not western Kyushu, it's uh, on the east coast of Kyushu facing the inland sea. Kind of a cool place.
How you doing? I understand. Nice weekend? Nice weekend, yeah. I had a lot of fun this weekend. Actually. So we do the same thing. Ask her, what did, she, what did she do? And she'll say, I don't remember. And I'll say, were you drunk? <laughs> we have our, I, I we have our Monday morning conversation here. So. I went to a jazz bar in Pichijone. It was like my... A I spa? A jazz bar. A jazz bar. Uh, in Pichijone. That was my first experience. Live or a place where they play records? And they play... Yeah, they play music. Okay, so a jazz bar doesn't mean musicians. It means a bar where their background music is jazz. No, actually, they actually play oh, they were. instruments, yeah. So live music, cool. okay. Yeah, live jazz. Would that be called a jazz bar, then? Because to me, in my image of Japanese language and Japanese culture, when we speak about a Japanese kisa or jazz bar, ja a jazz kisa or jazz bar, it's a place where they're going to pour you drinks, but they're playing they're playing records. He's got right, that's a thousand. What I thought, that's what I yeah. thought. But yeah, that, that was my first experience going to a jazz bar where they play real. Actual. So in one corner, there's a little miniature stage and stuff, and. Uh, yeah, there was a like stage or like there was a place that yeah. yeah. was like you know, playing music yeah. in yeah, the yeah. middle, yeah. and then everyone else was like sitting around okay. and listening to the music. So they probably do this maybe only on weekends or something, or. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah, it was yeah. Friday night. So maybe. Local musicians, right? I guess, yeah. But I mean, Japanese. not not famous Japanese jazz musicians overseas. It's a local, yeah, local. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Still, still. Are you? Do you listen to jazz lots, or is this new to you? Or it was new to me. Yeah, I went to different and mm. I, mean, I don't really listen to music. So I don't have much knowledge of jazz mm. and all this, but mm. it was really good. What is somebody digging about records? Oh, this is the thing here in Japan. You go to this kind of bar, and the guy behind him, it's LP records. There's no CDs in the place like this, right? It's LP records, start to finish. And the guy picks out, you ask for Bill Evans and whatever, he plays Bill Evans. It's a big deal here, I think. Not just jazz, there's probably, a, there might be a coffee shops or jazz or, or bars for country music, maybe, or stuff like this. It's kind of a thing. Yeah, a lot of jazz nerds. Jazz is, it's maybe healthier here than perhaps a lot of other places. Uh, I would get the impression in Scandinavia, maybe it's healthy, Germany maybe. I think jazz is uh, probably, uh, a pandemic, I don't know, pandemic may have destroyed it, but uh, whatever. Last night, it's okay, my arm, I tried to reach the camera. If, if I try, it's stiff now. If I don't want to adjust the camera because it hurts if I move my arm. But other than that, nothing. I don't think I have a fever. I did, I followed instructions, didn't go to the pool today. They said no exercise the first day, so I, whatever, was a good boy. <coughs> but other than that, nothing. I could imagine a tiny bit of fever, but I think it's just so hot in here without the air conditioner, I can't tell. But I imagine if you beep it now, I'm probably tiny, tiny, tiny bit of fever. I don't know. You look fine. You look like really, really tired or like um, exhausted last Thursday. Oh, so I thought you said Wednesday, no. Yeah, you, you got a puppy eyes, right? And I was like, the neighbors, are you okay today? Because you know, you know. Do you remember that? Well, no, but I, I've, I've been down. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to keep happy right now. You know, it's the, it's the financial year end and the bank accounts and the tax bill I got to pay in a few weeks and all that crap. <laughs> and then the shop. Do we open the shop? Not open the shop and stuff. These guys are doing fine. They've taken a huge amount of work away from me. But I don't feel happy because there's this every day now it's just firefighting drudgery. And I promised myself years ago that I would never live like that again. Mm -hmm. And here I am bit by bit by bit now. And over the last year, whatever, it's just the daily routine is no fun. I'm not going to quit and blow it all up, because I am okay. I'm, I'm having fun. I'm carving. I'm doing work I want. But That's getting, I know, but getting up in the morning is just, ah, oh, Jesus. Uh -huh. So we, I, I have to make a change somehow here. And we'll see. The virus, the airport, we'll get a shop manager. One day. One day. One day. So I'm hearing this, the, it's like she just said this, you didn't look good, you know, you look blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, I'm always happy, I'm always perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I will go upstairs. Um, because um, my summer holiday vacation is coming up, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will walk with Watanabe-san today and show like how okay. to... Oh, right, that's what I was going to ask. Wait, when is your holiday starting? What's the... Next weekend, next Friday. Okay, but then, don't, isn't our AMA next... Not, our AMA is not this week, right? It's the week after. 
What's AMA? The AMA with Jeff. The Ask Me Anything. There's the live ah, stream. So, so, so. Just, it's actually right before, right before um, my summer holiday. Are oh, you going after that? Yeah, two weeks from now. Then. Okay, okay, yep. okay, 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 okay. Right. So I was going to chat with you. Am I doing your work while you're away, or is she going to cover for your work, or well, whatever? Let's, uh, let's talk. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I will work with Lotanada. Okay, sorry, okay. 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 thanks, son. Okay. Thank you. Summer holidays. Hey, so so. Can't keep track of this. What vaccine did I get for number four? They gave me spike vax. Did you know about this? I got the paper, you know, when I made the reservation, I got the paper some couple of weeks ago. You can now make your reservation. It says what you're scheduled for is spike vax. Maybe we talked about this and I'm like, spike vax? Is this that thing from China or something? I don't want this, what's going on? I Google it. And I didn't even know about this. Mo they've changed the name. I guess Moderna. People here are nervous about the name Moderna for some reason. <laughs> so they've changed the name. Is this just here in Japan or is it overseas? They've re yeah, they've rebranded and it's Moderna. And it, uh, yesterday, whatever it says on the Kaijo, the va vaccine we're delivering today is Spikevax, previously known as Moderna. And I have no, I had no idea about this. <laughs> This idea came from Moderna themselves, or this came from the Japanese health ministry that said, look, we're getting too much resistance. Please change the name or something. I have no idea. <laughs> so someone's got a spike fax. It scared the crap out of me when I saw that. Moderna, yeah, give it to me. It's a normal vaccine. But this sounds, sounds way scarier to me than Moderna did. So I don't know. <laughs> Whatever, I trust it. I really, I'm not in any way an anti-vaxxer. I completely trust the science, absolutely. I know there's tiny X percent risk, but we need to do this socially. We have to get more, and we don't need to talk about it. It's okay, I understand it's gonna make problems, but yeah. So I happily got vaccinated yesterday. <laughs> Uh, the, the lady who did it, I should have learned my lesson years ago. Don't try and chat with these people. I should have learned my lesson. Most of the time I have learned my lesson. I sat in there and I had to ask her to switch the chair around because everybody else is getting it in their left shoulder. I'm a lefty, I want it in my right shoulder. So no problem. So I said, uh, this set her back because she has to move the chair around so I'm facing the other way. She can't move her chair and stuff like that. So, so that set us off. And then as I'm getting my shirt off, I thought, let's let's just make conversation. You know, I asked her, like, how many have you done today? You know? And just, yeah, I shouldn't have bothered. It flustered her and she thought it was a serious question. She put the thing down and went back to her paperwork and she was ready to sit there and count. Lady, I didn't mean it that seriously. I'm not a reporter for the New York Times. I just... <laughs> Japan, 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 you know. And it flustered her, so I then said, no, 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 please, okay, so no, no, let's just do this. There's people waiting, let's just, you know. I said, okay, thank you, thank you, yes, that's okay. Shoot, and out we go. But you'd think I'd learn my lesson by now, but... There's no such thing as casual conversation in this country, not between anybody. I knew about this. This is the fourth time. So the, the level of the level of organization in that room is insane. The government obviously once this vaccination thing started, whenever it was, a couple of years ago, is it now? I don't remember when this all started up. Back at the beginning, remember there weren't really good supplies of the vaccines. It was a question of how do we deliver these things. It was a logistics issue. There was temperature issues and whatever. It was a big, big deal. And this, the Japanese do this, They're, of course. You know, they do logistics like this with no problem. Uh, we're now into like two years of this, so you'd think they would have sorted it out and settled down. But there were, I didn't count, I should have counted. Twenty-five, 
24, 25, 30 staff members in the room. It was uh, one of the smaller rooms at the local sports center. We were coming through in groups of 30. I was in the 5 o'clock booking with 30 people. The 4 o'clock, I, I got there about an hour early, so I saw the 4 o'clock group of 30 shuffling through. The 4.30 group shuffled through. I was in the 5 o'clock group. I was already, so I, I got chair number one in the holding pen. So there were 30 people, so you're dealing with 60 people an hour, and there was 30 staff members. And does it need 30 staff members, plus parking attendants and all that stuff outside? Does it need 30 people to deal with 60 vaccinations an hour, you know, whatever? A part of the thing is the government just told all the cities, do what you need to do, we'll pay for it. So it's a blank check environment. The central government is paying for all vaccination costs totally. They're buying the vaccines, they're paying the cities to deliver them. So it's a blank check environment. So the city has taken that blank check and run with it. Not in an evil way, but uh, make sure there's no problems. And there was around 30 people in the room there, you know. When I sat down, after getting the vaccination, you sit down there, the lady gives you a piece of paper. I had got mine at, at uh, 1,400 hours and 54 minutes. So my, my, my little yellow paper said 14 colon 54, 14 colon 54. And you're supposed to sit in your chairs. I got chair number one. I said I was group number, number one in that group. And you have to sit there for 15 minutes. If you've had previous issues, you sit there for 30 minutes. So my yellow paper said 1509. And I put it here. I think I put it first in my pocket. And then he said, no, excuse me, excuse me. Leave the paper on your lap. And I'm like, she's not, she, she wants to be able to read the number. So we all have to leave our paper on our lap. Mine says 1509. The guy behind me must have said 1510, whatever it was. And we're all in chairs in order. I'm number one, number two, number three. And she just walks and patrols. And she's looking at us like, has this guy collapsed yet? She keeps asking, are you okay? How are you doing? And I'm like, yeah, I'm doing fine. No more. I so, well, but you, we have to leave the paper uncovered so that she can check the time. And then you, you get it. She's watching the time. At 15.09 and one second, she says, okay, good, there you are. She gathers the, ter the paper and sends me on my way. So, <laughs> but, so it's done so properly, there's nothing to complain about, but uh, all these people, whatever, they're there, they're working, they're getting paid, they're happy. here today. I've really been talking a bit too much. I'm sorry, but this line work, these are coming out nicely. This is a good crispy little piece of wood. Dave here is being pretty careful with his knife. And some weeks slash months from now, when this print is out in the market, you can look at this woman and these lines, these are nice lines. Now you think you might think it's easy, you know, like what did I just do? I put my knife and just ran it along some wood and it made a curve. You try it. You try it. And I'm not well yeah, I am, whatever. These these lines that I've carved here, it's fairly thin. We've got a shape on one side. When you come down the other side, you've got to keep an eye on where the left side was so that it makes a nice curve. It can't be mechanical, exactly the same width either ways, because this is not a mechanical pencil that drew these things. So what I've done today, actually, chatting, chatting, and blah, 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 blah. It's actually pretty skilled stuff. And it's coming out quite nicely, and I can still do this. I need the visual help. If I didn't have a lens here, there's no way I could sit with this piece of wood and do this. <clears throat> I could get sort of one side of it carved, but I would never, ever, ever get the second side to match the taste, because the flow of the brush stroke that you're making there comes from the second line that you carve, the back side. 
the first side, it doesn't really matter where it goes. If you, you've got a line here, the first line, it doesn't matter. There's your line, it goes like that. But the second one, you carve the other side of it, it's got to match and not match, as I said, mechanically. It's got to match. It thickens up here, it thins here, it tapers off there. It's not easy. Okay, let's look at some things. I'm not exactly sure what's in here, but Nabisan got some stuff for the flea market. Actually, she sent me a link to a couple of the auctions first and said, Dave, what do you think about these? Are these okay for the flea market? And I said, yeah, 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 let's grab those. Looks like a good price balance. We can put these in here, let's grab those. But she didn't send me, she just, I, it, When the printers freeze the paper, how is it arranged? It's arranged with lots of in-between a newspaper. <clears throat> That's an important point. Sugasam. Can we talk about this later? And this is a complex, interesting point to bring up. Jack TMZ. Are you going to be around in a, in a stream like next week or something? Because right now we got some show and tell prints to look at, but freezing the paper is actually a conversation to have how to do this and important points and important points. Can you, can we rain check this question? Is that okay? Or are you just here today? Or send me an email or something? Because it's an interesting question with lots and lots and lots. Okay, Jed, jog me again next time. Because I won't remember, so you'll have to remember. about eight or nine or ten prints here. Look at this, just raw prints against the cardboard. <laughs> Whatever. At least he got them, he got them sort of stiffened, but man, that could have been a disaster. This is cardboard and they're cut the same way. If that mailman had been a little tiny bit rougher with this, Whatever, whatever, whatever. These are nice little prints. Based on what I saw on the auction page, they're from the Taisho era. So way under package, ne? I think he's an American living in Japan. These are, as far as I know, from Taisho. They show every evidence of, it wouldn't be late Meiji, it wouldn't be that far back. It's Taisho era or early Showa. And these are reproductions of a print series that oh, it's these are reproductions from Hokusai, one of Hokusai editions of the Tokaido series. We all know the famous Hiroshige Tokaido series. Everybody else and his dog did Tokaido series, including Hokusai. I don't think we need that. And this is a Taisho era reproduction. Let's have a look. It's got the usual Taisho thick black outlines and the quite saturated colors. They saturated way more than back in the Edo time. These are the things that, that tell you it's, it's Taisho. You can see the, the vivid, vivid saturation here. The rich black, vividly saturated. and the overall hardness of the carving lines. The lines are carved much harder than they would have been. If I had a Hoxai original to compare with this, the Hoxai original would have had a bit more shape or something to this hat. These guys have carved almost mechanically. It's hard and crisp and clean. It's lost a bit of taste, but it's very, very, very well done. And these went out, as far as we know, as subscription prints. It was very common back in the Taisho era. This is pre-war. This is 1915, 1920, 1925. There were lots of publishers doing subscription prints of different types.
Anyway, this is from Hokusai's Tokaido, and it's got this older fashioned writing. This is Hakone, the Hakone Station. And it's here, Tokaido Goju Sansuki, number 11, Ju Ichi. And I'm not sure about the numbering because there's two ways to number it from, from Nihonbashi or you start numbering one at Shinagawa. So I don't remember which numbering system they have used here. And we have in this group of auctions, we have one, two, three, we have four of these. Let's have a look at them. I was going to say it's from the station called Tsukusa, but it's not. Of course, it's Kusatsu, one of the stations. Hokusai horse! We meet our horse again. We meet this guy off and on during these adventures. What's he doing? Has he got a... a, a is that a food bag? No, I don't think so. I don't know. And again, we see some of the pigments here. Somebody's going to mention it. There's the black from the key block. There's the black on the guy's leggings. And the same black key block is underneath this green here. So we have... We have, again, some of these semi-opaque pigments still in use here. You can see the green where it covers the black lines. Why is the green over the black? Always in the ukiyo-e tradition, the black is printed first, period. The black always is printed first. The key lines are printed first. There could be a black block used later to add black, but the key lines go first and the colors go on top. And normally, it's okay because the pigments we use normally are transparent. But in this era, at the end of Edo, towards this era, they started using different pigments. And this one is partially opaque. Spoils it for me. Also, these horses, now there's the belts. The belts are stones they use. The, the cloth at the back over his tail is held from being flapping up in the wind. It's held by little weights and they were sometimes stones, we are told, and sometimes it was little bells. So they've kept the key lines behind it to give transparency. Someone's picking this up here, coding gummy. Give a transparency effect. Next is Oiso. This is the station in Kanagawa Prefecture, Oiso. And I don't recognize the famous place here. What does it say? To da. I don't know the location. Is there a famous stone? What are we looking at? To da shi ko. How are we going to pronounce this? No idea. Something ishi. Oh, it could be. I'm just guessing. This this is stone. And this is Tora, tiger, and that's child, the ch tiger's child stone. No, it's not Fu, it's Ko. This is a kanji. This is Ko, and this is Ishi, and these are hiragana. Quick Google, tiger child stone in Oiso. Does it make any sense? Has somebody got a story for us here? Questions? No idea. Nobody's found anything. No idea. Someone's saying fog. This is not fog. This is, uh, it's a, uh, what do you call it? It's a, a classic uh, thing taken from screen paintings. Back in the old days when they did screen paintings, they weren't representations of a window, so there was no frame and the, if the image ends here. They painted in the middle of the screen, and then to get the thing to work to the end, they would do these cloud-type shapes at the top and the bottom of the screen, just so that you've got your image there and you can finish off the screen without figuring out how to use up those corners and the edge. And it was a real thing in screen paintings of the different schools, the Kano school or whatever. I don't know anything about the screen paintings. And when the Ukiyo-e era came along, sometimes for landscapes, they picked up that same idea. 
So this one's okay. They've taken this one right to the top and there's trees near the corner, but still they've kept that mood and that feeling of landscapes from the old screen paintings. So instead of having to figure out what to do at the corners. Someone's got it. Torako Ishi, the tiger boulder of Oiso. There is a tiger boulder. There you are. I'm learning something. I can, in this one, I can read. I couldn't read the neighborhood restaurant sign, but this one I could get. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Looks like a potato. <laughs> hey, it's only Hokusai. Give him a break. <laughs> this is Totsuka. And I guess there must have been, is there today? There must have been a large Buddhist statue. This is not Enoshima. This is Totsuka. This is farther down the highway than the place we now have the Daibutsu at Enoshima. This is Totsuka. And I think, you know, this you know, cloud thing here, I think, mm, is this in the way or not? I don't know. I guess once you've started doing it for your series, you're making a series, so you've got to keep the things kind of all stylistically together. No, he didn't. He didn't do it on this one. Look at this. Hakone didn't get any clouds. He forgot. There should have been the cloud here. <laughs> this one here. It's also possible too, you know, don't get angry at me here, but it's possible this part of it wasn't done by Hokusai. The publisher said, Hokusai, hi, we're going to do a Tokaido, give me sketches. And it's quite possible, totally possible slash probable, that Hokusai sent in his sketches. There's the people, there's the horse, there's the stuff. And Hokusai wouldn't have done the borders and the titles and the numbering and all the names and stuff like that. He would have handed in his drawings, his sketches. And maybe if the project was considered to be a bit more important, they would say the sketch. Okay, good. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Fix that. Okay, let's clean these up a bit, please, and then let's go. And Hokusai himself would have taken the approved sketches back, and he might have drawn again a little bit more neatly, a little bit more cleanly. And I'm just theorizing here. He might have just drawn the central important part. That then goes back to the publisher's place. And they are now more than capable of doing the rest of it. If Hokusai's sketch had only been that big, they can fill in the mountains. In fact, you could, you could look at this and you could theorize. <clears throat> here he is. He's done this part. They look like good living strokes. Over here, look at these strokes. They don't seem to make any sense. They're just splashed in. Right there. Strokes this far look okay. The strokes in that last group don't seem to make any sense. And I would probably, I would, I would bet a bit of money on this, actually, that what he had handed in went this far, and the people in the publisher's outfit filled in the rest. They're totally capable of doing that. Someone says he phoned it in, not in an evil way, just that's all the job was required. He wasn't paid to go to the outside and draw the straight lines and get it all done. The publisher's team did that. Me and Jed, Jed's given me a sketch and some drawings for the next print. I'm gonna get the straight lines ready and the registration marks and all that kind of stuff. So it's certainly possible that Hokusai didn't put any of that in and the publisher filled it in. I don't know. And the only way we'd find out is if some museum somewhere, somewhere turned up a few leftover of the tracings that didn't get pasted down and carved. And that would give us an insight into the part way along process here. Okay, one of my son's auction packages, she's got those four and she's got three more. And these are from a different, a different group of prints. These are from a Kabuki Juhachiban. We've talked about this many times on this stream. The Ichikawa Danjiro clan selected a group of 18 Kabuki plays and said, these are ours. No other Kabuki family can do these. These are ours. They are specializing in the Aragoto style, and we are going to handle these. And they selected a group of 18 prints that have become known as the Kabuki Juhachiba. And we have many, many, many prints based on these. We did some in this year's series on the main print. This is a group of prints. I think they look like Sadak, <coughs> Sadanobu. Not sure. Not sure. I'm seeing them here for the first time, so I don't know. They look like Hasegawa Sadanobu. I'm not quite sure. I'm also not quite sure which of the plays is depicted here. Yeah, one of the plays has the guy hiding in a bell. 
Again, this is the same era. This is Taisho era stuff. Bright, 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 brilliant coloring. My God. Clean, clinically sharp carving. Bright, brilliant, blinding level of putting pigment on paper. This is woodblock printing. You've seen us do this. Put a bit of pigment on a block and rub it from the back. We're talking about the white balance again, guys. Just a minute. Let's look at this then. The main camera white balance and my white balance. Here we are. I can't. There's, there's the green. Let's have a look at this. Okay, can you remember that green? It's a dirtier green here. A bit more bluey there. Also, too, can you see the bling, the shiny? They've given us, here we are. They've given us show menzuri, front rubbing on this. Lots of it. Wow, look at that. Bling, bling, bling. Okay, these seven prints that she's got here from auction, these all will be going into the uh, flea market. I don't even know how much they're going to cost. I don't know how much they cost us. It's all going to be what nabe -san. She will be handling this. I don't know. But it won't be tomorrow. So somewhere uh, X months down the line from now, these prints will be appearing in our flea market. We won't be keeping these in our collection. It's not lacquer, no. It's a black, black, you know, black pigment printed on top. I said, maybe a few minutes ago, I said the key blocks were black or dark gray, and we sometimes printed black as a color on top. So this is black printed with a bunch of glue in it, and then to make it shiny, it's rubbed on the top with a baron. The black is printed this way, printed from the back, and then once the print was finished and dried, they rub just those areas to give it shiny. You carve a block underneath, and you rub on top, and the paper gets squeezed and shined. Could I show again the last print with the clouds cutting in half of the print? I'd like to see the back of the print to see if the tree on the left has been totally carved. You mean the tree goes under here? No, 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 no. The tree is cut here, nothing is there, and the tree is carved at the top. These clouds are not an opaque band that's covering something up. No, 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 no. No, 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 that's not how we do this. The clouds here are not covering anything. They're, I mean, in, in the way we see the picture, we think of the clouds as covering the trees. But there are no trees there. It wasn't cut that way. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. It's like here. There's no statue carved here behind those trees. Of course not. It would be completely, totally waste. And I don't believe this is the Kamakura Buddha we are talking there. This is Totska, a different town way, way farther down the highway. This is not the Enoshima Buddha. This is Totska. OK, 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 OK. <clears throat> I'm out of here. It's 9.33. Cup of coffee first. And then it's another day of bookkeeping. And hopefully the last day. We have a gr an agreement. Yamada-san's coming today. Aoyama's coming. And today we are going to send off our zip file of bookkeeping files. Go to the accountant later this afternoon. Mm. See you again here in three more days. I may be carving the surfer. I may be carving something else completely. I don't know. And then the week after that is going to be the AMA. Not this coming Thursday, Wednesday, but the week after that Thursday, Wednesday, is our AMA, I believe. See you then. Okay, thanks very much. Let's put up the outside camera to finish off. <laughs> and somebody has made a mistake with their batteries. See the garbage in the middle there? It's a plastic bag, and I believe there's batteries inside, and they're supposed to go out on the first or third Monday.
and today is the second Monday. So I think the guy who runs the antique shop there has made a little bit of a calendar mistake. And the ninjas won't be here today because early this morning they got in their car, filled it with gear and drove off. They're doing ninja house calls somewhere today, some sports club or someplace, I have no idea. I think that's enough. Let's sign off. I'll see you in a few more days. Thanks very much and bye for now.